Uh, hello and welcome to the BlackBerry Enterprise Application Development course. Uh, in this course, we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna review how to develop an app from beginning to end, uh, assuming we've been asked to do so by a company. We're gonna review how to use uh, standard graphical controls, input methods, commands. Uh, local storage, both using the the internal BlackBerry system and the relatively new SQ Lite, XML interaction with web services, and a few more other things that are useful in application development. Um, the focus here is on business apps. Uh, BlackBerry was from the very beginning a platform designed to tackle the needs of business users. And well, uh, now there's a blur, in this day, blur between consumer and business users. Uh, there's still uh, the, the need to, to develop these apps, which is the, the focus of our, of our company. Uh, so how can we develop a product for business use as fast as possible, as quickly as possible, following what kind of procedures? This is the, the focus of our, of our development course, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, on this first video, we're going to review how to create a very simple bare bones app and talk about some of the components uh, there. Okay, so let's get started. This is the Eclipse uh, development environment with the BlackBerry Java plugin installed. There are two ways to get this. Uh, one is you get Eclipse as a standalone installation and then you download the, the BlackBerry Java development plugin and install it on top of it. Or you go directly to BlackBerry developer site, that would be developers.blackberry.com where you can get an integrated package installation for Eclipse and the Java plugin. So, <clears throat> let's see, we go here, we go to new, we choose, we can go BlackBerry project, but let's go to project here. We're going to choose BlackBerry here. Let's put a name, let's name it um, practice one. You can name it any way you like, of course. Uh, we're going to use sort of default workspace. A workspace in the context of Eclipse, for those of you who don't know, is just a folder where you uh, have several related projects. Okay, and we're going to use BlackBerry 7.1 SDK. By default, Java plugin comes with only one uh, JRE, but you can install more from the uh, Eclipse update uh, command. It's important to note that BlackBerry apps are not forward, I mean, are not backwards compatible. That means if you develop an app and build it on 7 SDK, this app will not run on previous versions of the operating system. On the other hand, it will run correctly on future versions of the operating system unless stated otherwise by the company. So what we're going to do is to choose the oldest operating system that supports the functionality we need. Okay, let's just add this project to the build path so that it gets uh, built automatically. What kind of app are we going to choose? We're going to create a BlackBerry application. These are just templates, we don't really need them, but uh, for, for the purposes of discussion, we're going to use this one, BlackBerry application. Now let's, let's name our app. Title is what the users are going to see on their screen. Let's call it uh, practice one. Screen class name. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about that later, but essentially or all screens or working screens in BlackBerry are derived from a class. So let's call this one uh, practice. No, let's call it main. Well, there's already a main screen, so let's call it 
uh, default. Yeah. I hope there's not a class in the default screen already. <laughs> it could be. Okay. So application class name, let's call it practice one. And package name, let's choose our company name. Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay, you can see on the left side of the screen the folder icon has a BlackBerry symbol next to it so you can easily identify that this is a BlackBerry project. Uh, it automatically opens on, uh, on the application properties screen. Here we can set up some stuff like the application title. This is what the user will see on their home screen. We can put our company name here. Uh, some short textual description of the app. In application type, we're going to use BlackBerry application. Uh, we can also create midlets, which was uh, the original standard for mobile development uh, in Java, Java Micro Edition, which BlackBerry supports. And in fact, some of the APIs are shared between the two types. However, they look different, so generally speaking, we're going to choose BlackBerry application for BlackBerry development as opposed to a midlet. Uh, to run on the startup, we're gonna, not going to be using this uh, on this demonstration. However, you should know that a BlackBerry app can run on the background silently uh, without user interface, and we can set up that by just clicking this option and turning it on. Okay, so that's all for now. Let's save this. Now uh, we have two folders, REST and source. In REST we can put anything that our application uses, like text files, audio files, images, whatever. And all our Java code is going to go into the source folder in the appropriate package. So we automatically have uh, these two classes already created. Let's explore them. Practice one is our main application class. It's called practice one because that's the name I put it on the configuration screen. And as you can see, the important thing here is that this class inherits from a class called UI application. All BlackBerry apps inherit from either this class or its super class, which is called application. What's the difference between these two? UI application is for apps that have a user interface. Uh, as I was telling you before, a BlackBerry app is not, is not uh, required to have a user interface, but it can have one. And, and even those who have one can also be started in, in silent mode as well. So. But anyway, if you are going to have a user interface, you need to inherit from this class. Now, we have an entry point for the application that it's a main static void main function. In here, note that we had to manually instantiate the class of our main application, practice one. Now, here in the template, they're saving a reference to this, this instance in a local variable called the app. It is unnecessary, or you can use a static or an, or an instance variable, or you may even uh, choose to have a, a function, a getter function to, to obtain that information. But in any way, that's the way they're doing it here. So <clears throat> we're gonna leave it like that for the time being. And now we're gonna call enter event dispatcher. This is our requirement. We need to absolutely call this function what it does is signal the operating system that we are ready to receive events. 
Uh, BlackBerry applications are not really, um, how, do you, how can we say this, procedural, they're event-based. So after our application has been started, we're going to wait for the operating system to send this event. A call just got made. The user uh, pressed a key. Uh, I don't know. Whatever event is uh, relevant for our app is going to be dispatched for us. And that's going to start from this function on work. Then we have the deconstructor for our main application class, practice one. And what is happening here is that we are creating a screen and showing it. We're going to review what exactly is happening here in a minute, but for now the important thing is that this object here, the full screen, is a screen, and the function push, push screen is uh, showing it to the user. Library screens are uh, operate as a stack. So first there's nothing, then you push a screen, and then if you push another screen, it goes on top of the previous one. The previous one does not get deleted or destroyed unless you manually do that. So when you pop the screen on top, the previous screen automatically uh, shows. So this is very convenient for our purposes, and we're, and we're gonna take advantage of that fact um, later on. Okay, so let's review now what is happening with this default screen. This is another class. As you can see, it inherits <clears throat> from a class called main screen. And the only thing that we're doing here in the constructor is setting a title for it, practice one. So this is an empty screen. Uh, main screens in BlackBerry are the screens that occupy the whole uh, visible area of the physical screen. And they, they, have, like, they have a menu, uh, a default menu with a close option that we're gonna see in a minute. Okay, so this is basically the simplest application you can create for BlackBerry. Uh, you have like an empty screen with a title and a close menu. Let's take a look at it and see how it works. BlackBerry Simulator. Normally, the first time you run the simulator, it takes some time. So that's normal. Okay, there is our simulator. Let's wait for it to load. it's time to talk about something. Uh, right now, at the time I'm taping this video, a lot of people have asked me, does it make sense to develop apps for BlackBerry? And my answer is uh, definitely. I mean, uh, there's, uh, there's, there's certain challenges that the company has to face and they're working on for the new BlackBerry 10 version to address uh, those issues. But the important thing for our purposes here is that there are a lot of BlackBerry devices on circulation. Uh, many companies who have investments in the platform already made, and they still have the need to have apps working for them, which is the purpose of this, uh, this training uh, session. How can we create apps for business use? So yes, definitely, and uh, then we'll have to see what happens with the new, uh, the new uh, products developed by the company. Okay, that's your simulator. Let's locate our app. Generally, uh, our app is going to be either in the download folder or directly here somewhere. Um, I think it might be this one. Yep, practice one. Uh, an empty screen, that's it, and a closed menu. Let's close it, and that's it. So in the next session, we're going to review how to add graphical controls to the screen, how to add options to that menu, 
and see what else we can do uh, with the commands and clicks and other interesting stuff. Uh, okay, so thank you for your interest. I hope you enjoy, have enjoyed this tutorial and uh, don't forget to check out the rest of it on our website. Bye.